Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is section 5.8. We're going to talk about electrochemical cells, which is a fancy word for batteries, um, which is also a fancy word for um, voltaic cells. You mix a couple chemicals together with a couple of metals, they can exchange electrons. If you can capture those electrons, then you can run flashlights and toys and things off of them. So, what you're staring at is the classic picture of electrochemical cell that you're going to see on tests and quizzes. It's got two beakers, it's got two metals hanging in there, those are called electrodes. It's got a voltmeter which can measure the voltage, and it's got this crazy tube in the middle that are called a U-tube. And yes, it was named long before the website came along. So there are a couple of quick little definitions that I'd like you to write down to get started with. Nothing is super fancy except for the two that I have circled. You absolutely need to know the difference between those. And that is the whole point of tomorrow's lesson. You're going to make a battery, you're going to analyze it, you're going to answer a few questions on it, and everything should work out great. So in an electrochemical cell, you've got two electrodes, that's your metal. Half of the battery is called the anode side, and the other half is called the cathode side. What you need to know for now is that oxidation takes place at the anode. So the loss of electrons will take place at the anode, and the gaining of electrons, which is reduction, will take place at the cathode. So here's my little twist on the Leo the Lion says Gur. We are going to change it around a little bit and add lose electrons oxidation anode and gain electrons reduction cathode. So in my sarcastic move, I'm basically saying Leo is a jerk. So instead of Leo the Lion says Gur, we're just getting rude. Um, Leo's a jerk, and that's going to help you out, and we'll chat more about that tomorrow. The oxidation reaction is nothing new. That's just the solid losing two electrons and forming its ion, and the reduction reaction, that's also nothing new. It's the ion gaining two electrons, forming its solid. The new stuff is in those circles, or pretty horribly drawn circles. This zinc solid is breaking down to form its ion. That zinc solid is disappearing. The mass of that zinc electrode is decreasing. So you can say that the anode loses mass. It's literally shrinking. And the cathode is going to be the opposite. The cathode that's hanging in there is going to be collecting copper solid molecules on it. It's going to be getting larger and larger and larger. So the mass of that cathode, that electrode hanging in there, will actually be growing. You're going to see that in a really good animation tomorrow. The electrons have to flow through a battery, and it's going to flow from where they're lost to where they're gained. So the electrons flow from the anode to the cathode in an external wire, according to that diagram. And I have a picture of it right here. So the electrons do this. They leave the anode, and they enter the cathode, and the Cu plus 2 is waiting for it. So the Cu plus 2 is in solution. will collect those two to form the Cu solid. That little tube in the middle there is called a U-tube, and we rather you call it a salt bridge. And this is what it looks like in most of the questions. It's filled with a salt solution, two things that are spectators. Uh, they do help the electrons flow. Uh, we'll, we'll chat more about that tomorrow as well. Some questions call it a porous barrier, but those are details that you'll just see with the practice. Inside this cell, we have a, a lot of moving going on. We have the electrons flowing from the anode to cathode externally, and we have Zn solid being built up, and it's going to be decreasing in mass. And we have the Cu solid cathode here that's actually going to be increasing in mass. And we also have ions floating around. And to help balance off the charge of these electrons flowing, the positive and negative ions flow the opposite way. So this NO3- minus is going to flow towards the anode. It's an anion, and it flows towards the anode. Hopefully you can see a pattern there. The K+, plus, with it, which is called a cation, actually flows towards the cathode. And it's easily explained. This electron is flowing to the cathode. The electron's negative. And to help balance off all the negative charges going towards, in this case, the right side, the cations will flow there as well. This is also a cation, Cu plus 2. It's going to head towards the cathode. And Zn plus 2 is also a cation. 
It's literally going to go through the salt bridge and head towards the cathode as well. All of this is to help balance off the charge inside of the battery. So you can see from this little box here that cations will flow to the cathode and the anions will flow to the anode. This is where we're going to stop. I'm going to explain to you how we set up these things tomorrow. I'm going to explain to you how we even know what sides the anode and cathode. But this was supposed to be just a quick introduction to, to a few details that you will be able to practice a lot in, in class over the next couple of days. So with that said, please fill in these blanks. Please fill in this last box, and this is exactly where we're going to start tomorrow.